elevate, elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight. Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host. Kay Junkerth and I own Fitness Junkie Training, where we specialize in helping busy professional men get in the best shape of their life while working smarter, not harder. And today I'm joined with Brad Feinberg. He's a badass trainer. We have a lot of the very similar philosophies when it comes to fitness. Um, and he's worked with some really high profile names. Really interesting. He's worked with the lead singer of Imagine Dragons, Diplo, Steve Aoki. And I'm excited to talk with him a little bit more about that. And he's got some really unique areas of expertise as well. So guys, sit back, relax, enjoy all the value you're going to get out of this podcast. And uh, first and foremost, thank you, Brad, so much for being on, sir. And uh, Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, sir. So let's let's dive right into it. You know, just kind of after mentioning some of those high profile names, Mm -hmm. um, wanted to kind of get your opinion on what is the difference between training someone who's, you know, big, they've got a name for themselves and just like gin pop, you know, are there some differences there? Like what, what, what have you found with that? Yeah. Um, That's a really good question. And the reason I, I like that question is because it all has to do with the mindset of an individual. And I say that because what makes someone, let's say high profile Right. is their success or what you know we deem successful mm-hmm. and whether that is Warren Buffett whether that's Dan Reynolds whether that's you know a professional athlete when you really dive into it their mindset is i would say different than the general pop yeah so when they say they're going to do something they do it So one of the biggest differences I've noticed, and and again, not to like downplay general pop, there's some amazing individuals in general pop, but to really look at the difference, when I was working with uh, Dan Reynolds from Imagine Dragons, he never deviated from the plan. Yeah, He's always said, yes, I'm going to do it, no matter what he had to do, and he just executed. And fortunately... You know, I knew a lot of what was going on and what he wanted um, to really just build that trust with him. But he trusted the process. He trusted me. And he just did it. There was never a time where he was like, oh, you know, I'm too busy or I don't feel like doing it. Like, it was just the discipline. So I would say the level of discipline and the relationship to themselves with what they're doing is just higher. Right. Where, you know, when working with, again, general pop or other individuals, you know, excuses exist. And I see a lot of those individuals letting those excuses either define who they are or get in the way of what they want. Right. Something I talk about on the podcast quite a bit is journaling. And that's because journaling has completely transformed my life. It's allowed me to be more reflective. It's allowed me to be more grateful in my life. And it's also allowed me to kind of be my own life coach in a way. So I highly recommend starting a journaling habit. And if you're just getting started into journaling, I highly recommend the Game On app. The Game On app is actually something I use every single day. It was built and founded by one of the guests I had on the podcast. And ever since then, I've been using the Game On app every single day. Um, And the cool thing about Game On, it's not just journaling, but it's also kind of a social media platform. So you can actually join my team and see what I'm journaling about, and we can keep each other accountable with journaling. So highly recommend it. It also prompts you to do journal entries if you're just kind of getting started. So it kind of walks you through being able to journal every single day. And it takes one to two minutes at most Um, to do your journaling habit every single day. So highly recommend it. Join my team with the link in description. You can see what I'm journaling about. We can keep each other accountable. Um, But other than that, guys, I appreciate you listening and enjoy the rest of the podcast. Yeah, I've found the same thing with some of my clients who are like are currently or have been college athletes Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, even some of my like high level CEO type of clients where this they've been in, they've been very successful in some sort of yeah. area 
it's like they're able to take that mindset in that area, transfer it into fitness, and it's a yeah. easier transition for some other people. Um, but I also kind of wanted to touch on what you said too, where like, you know, not to downplay gin pop either, because I've had some gin pop clients. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, who have had that mindset, but I think it's more of a, yeah, I think it's more of a testament. Go ahead. No. So, well, I, I think what the biggest difference too, is when you look at, uh, general pop and they're looking at these high profile individuals they're like, oh, how did they do it? And they think that they can't do that. And there is no difference. Yeah. I truly believe that anyone in the gen pop or LA fitness, you know, lifetime, whatever, doesn't matter the facility, training in your, your garage, whatever. Yeah. Everyone has that ability to get to that high level and whatever they want to do. For sure. It's just how disciplined can you stay when the storm is always there? Mm -hmm. You know, how disciplined can you be when every single thing life is throwing at you is getting in your way? Are you going to accept that and give up? Right. Or are you going to learn? Are you going to keep pushing forward to become successful? So, you know, that's, and you're right. I, you know, they're starting off like worked. I've worked with, thousands thousands of general pop and they they've have learned to elevate themselves to get to that high level so anyone can do it Absolutely. it's just you know it's just a decision at the end of the day right yeah and I, and I think the difference between kind of what you're saying is those high level individuals or you know these we'll just call them high performers have proven to themselves that they can do certain things and reach a certain yeah. level no matter what's going on in their life but i think when gym pop clients, if they can prove to themselves that they can do this um, by staying on track, like having yeah. that um, trust with themselves and showing themselves that they can stick to something, no matter what's yeah. going on, then then yeah, you're completely right. There's there's no limit to what they can achieve, 100. percent Absolutely, the, the limit just comes from what they decide. 100%. You know, obviously, yes, the body. When we study it physiologically, it's you know there's systems in play but if you can understand how to manipulate the body if you can understand truly our relationship to stress if we can understand these different mechanisms or rules or ways to to change the body then really it's just about you know staying on track doing con staying consistent with the right things or the right you know, mechanics and the, you know, your health, your body, whatever it is, we'll get there. Right. It's just, you know, in today's day and age, it's like, we want it now. Yeah. And I'm sorry, the body does not work that way at all. Mm -hmm. So you're right. It's just, it's just finding, you know, I, I truly believe the heart of it is with self image. And, you know, when we go after something, that let's say we don't know how to do or something of that like that massive goal whether it's you know for some people it's like hey you know i want to lose 40 pounds of fat and in their mind they truly believe they can't do it because right. of oh my genetics or a doctor said so or i read this here or i read this there and that's all you know, what, you know, whatever that is, whatever, you know, you're, you're perceiving the real reason that you're not getting there is because you're deciding that you can't do it or you're believing right. that you can't do it. Right. And when you, when you can make that switch, that's when the magic happens. You know, that's when, you know, I truly believe that our body has no limits in, you know, in, in that respect, you know, I understand we can't grow wings and fly, <laughs> But it's also like, what, what do you perceive as flying? You know, it's like hand gliding, skydiving. So at, yeah. at the end, where I'm going with this is at the end of the day, it's really our perception of the stress ourselves and what we want. For sure. And I know that you, you know, it's not like it's been smooth sailing for you your whole life, Brad. We were talking yeah. kind of stuff that we've struggled with before the podcast started recording and everything. Um, I know that you even had some addictions that you struggle with. Um, yeah. So how did you go from, you know, being addicted to, to substances 
um, to now being, you know, super fit and healthy, a, a trainer who's training high profile individuals and in everything that you're doing now. What was the yeah. first switch that was flipped there? Yeah, absolutely. So a little backstory when I was, so I went on tour with the Imagine Dragons and which was one of the most amazing experiences in my life and like unbelievable opportunity. I was married to um, my now ex-wife at the time. And you kind of find out how strong your relationship is when travel and distance comes into play. Right. So long story short, with all of that, you know, I, we, we didn't match. So there was a lot of um, struggle during that time. So that did not go like did not do well while I was traveling. And then in addition to that, you're on such a high all the time while on tour. Right. You know, I truly felt like I was making a difference in the world because I was helping this band be healthy. And as we know, to perform at a top level, you have to be healthy. Absolutely. And I truly saw the impact that this band made on the world. You know, it's obviously there's bands out there that, you know, so their drive is to, to play the music fantastic right what i saw with this band is they really wanted to make a difference in the world you know because dan went through anxiety and depression you know and 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 a lot of his fan base can resonate with that so i felt like indirectly i was making a difference in the world yeah when that ends you have this come down period which was very hard for me and in all, in all honesty, it still sometimes is. Yeah. And what I saw, I, I think that was when I truly realized that I'm addicted to these highs. Mm -hmm. And I went from, you know, literally being with the best band in the world to now back to a coach or to, to regular life. Right. And the thing is, is regular life was still amazing. Mm -hmm. But you have this, you know, gap in between and, and you're never left the same. Right. So fast forward, you know, trying to work it out with my ex-wife, but we split up. Right. And if anyone's been through a divorce, what that leaves you with is you're questioning everything. You're questioning yourself. And so now, you know, I'm, I'm still working with Dan at the time. But there's, I'm dealing with that. So there's all this like negative energy that now looking back, I realized that I was letting happen. Mm -hmm. And so to not feel that, that's when the substances started to creep in. Okay. And so next thing I know, I was, I was hooked on this stuff because, you know, it, it, it has you feel things that, you, you know, that can literally come in instantly. Right. So fast forward, I'm, I'm, I, I know that I need to break this and I, I meet my now wife. And, you know, it got to a point where I was letting all of that impact my health. Um, and at the time, I, I'm not ashamed to admit this or I'm very open about this. I was using um, performance enhancing drugs to enhance my body. So, I was abusing that as well because with higher levels of testosterone, work feels good. We understand that. Right. My dopamine receptors were enhanced. So everything was at the max. Yeah. And I could only see one thing and that was that. Gotcha. So at the time, my wife, or before we got married, she said, you know what? You need to stop. So she was like, this needs to change. Um, Dan, who I'm, you know, still, we're still best buds, uh, at the time I'm still working with him every day. He was like, you, like, I want to help you. I'm going to send you away to rehab. Wow. So, so he was like, you have a choice. He's like, obviously I'm not going to force you, but, and completely understandable. He's like, if you don't go, I don't know how a relationship can be, which totally understand. Yeah. And so I was like, all right. I'm going. So I remember getting there 
And you know when you're young and you're watching either like movies or stories and there's like that guy that is the villain or the drug user or the abuser, whatever it is. And as a kid, you're like, I will never be that. Right. Why would I ever do that? Yeah. And now I'm that guy. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. So I remember sitting in that room after I got checked in and everything. And I realized that I wasn't loving myself. Yeah. I realized that, you know, I just, I was destroying myself from the inside out because I couldn't face, you know, all the baggage that was collecting in the past with the divorce, you know, coming off a tour. So I made a decision. I was like, I got to be different. I got to change. I got, I have to be, I can't be this anymore. Yeah. So I go through rehab. I come out after a couple of months and it wasn't this just like, Oh, you're better. <laughs> Where, which a lot of people think they're like, Oh, you go to rehab and like, you know, cause, cause I, I, you know, I, I can understand this be controversial because where some people think addiction is a disease and other think it's, thinks it's not. Yeah. And I can understand why people think it's a disease because even to this day, you know, I get urges, cravings, I get triggers, mm -hmm. and it literally feels like you're being possessed. And so learning how to fight that was one of the hardest things I had to do. Yeah. So to fast forward and, you know, going through this now, really, I have a, I'm always aware of it and I'm always on top of it. You know, to, to know your enemy, you gotta, gotta understand your enemy. Mm -hmm. So getting through that is when I really kind of decided I got to pull myself together and, there was just that shift. But at the end of the day, it was because I decided. You know, right. Literally going back to what we were saying before. Um, but that is also what had me pull in, I would say, the last part of my method in my business, which is the mindset. Mm -hmm. And really, so I, I dove deep into that and just truly trying to understand mindset, loving yourself, perception, but also... Um, the neurology of it as well, like understanding dopamine, serotonin, yeah. and these neurotransmitters and hormones that can make or break you. Right. So that was really the turning point in that. So to fast forward now, um, fortunately, you know, I'll, like Dan really helped me, you know, elevate myself from, you know, just being known as you know his coach so i was able to use that to really expand and grow my business um but also just understanding that you know this is all in my control where a lot of times when you know you're in the uh, the bottom you're at rock bottom or, or just so much is going on you feel like it's not you feel like you have a loss of control yeah so started, you know, just really growing my business over time. And I would say this past year is really when I had a catapult and I owe that to having a support team, never doing it alone, yeah. but also growing this as much as I can. So 100%. that's it, man. Wow, man. Well, I really appreciate you being so vulnerable and honest about everything. Yeah. man. I know that people are going to be able to resonate with this. There's going to be so many people um, that are going to feel more connected to you now after listening to this. And I appreciate you sharing that with yeah, us. Of course. Yeah. Um, and well, lot you know, I, I think everyone either is, is either dealing with addiction or, well, let's be real. Our nation, our country is so like the amount of anxiety and depression yeah. that it, and, there's, there's a lot of factors that play into that, but I would say everyone is either dealing with it or knows someone that is dealing with it. Yeah. And no one teaches you how to handle that. Right. So we either go to get drugs, we either overeat, we either go to get alcohol. Yeah. You know, so I, I truly believe that every single person in here 
is either listening or in this country is is either dealing with something like that themselves or know someone that is. 100%. You know, and it's like I truly believe being, you know, when you look at being a man these days, um, you know, there's a lot about like controlling your emotions and this, which I agree a hundred percent, but there's also learning how to properly, you know, express those emotions and be yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. Whether that's with family, friends, a loved one, um, and learning to be vulnerable and honest and just own my shit at the end of the day. Like yeah. the only reason I was in that situation was me, no one else. Right. You know, and it's, it's learning how to, have a proper escape with exercise, eating right, but also just really acknowledging that emotions, you know, how to embrace them, be aware of them. Right. And like you said, you know, be vulnerable with them. Uh, and and we talked about it a little bit. I've shared with you before the podcast and I've shared with my audience too in the past about how I've struggled with alcohol in the past mm -hmm. and it affected my relationship that I'm actually luckily still in it in at this time um but at the yeah. time like it, it almost you know broke the relationship just how yeah. terrible i was honestly um but yeah there's a lot of different directions we can go with there's a lot to unpack with what you just said where, where i'd like to go with it is and, and we'll come back to it because there's a few things sure. i want to kind of just put a pin yeah, in. of course um but with on the topic of dopamine because it's something i've been studying a little bit more recently as mm -hmm. well i'm recent i'm currently reading the molecule the molecule of one i don't know if you've heard of that book um, i have yeah yeah super interesting i'm i'm just a, just getting into it but um really seems like it's got me hooked uh so on the topic of dopamine you know i, I know you said you know you're you've been on the highs and it's really hard to come down from the lows and so you've kind of replaced that at the time with substances um to try to yeah. feel that high Right. And I, I think a lot of people go through this without realizing it. And I think learning more about how our brains work with dopamine and different reward systems can help you kind of be more aware um, and, yeah. and how to uh, kind of counteract that. Um, so I realize it now that I, I was using certain things like alcohol to, to try to like get the feeling yeah. that I want um, and kind of using things as an escape. Um, yeah. And, you know, even some positive things, though, I've used my whole life, like exercise, yeah. like we Absolutely. talked about. Right. Um, so, but how would you say, like, if you just had to, you know, tell the listeners, um, you know, try to do this to, to improve your dopamine levels and don't use it in a harmful way. Like, cause I think we can either, either use our own reward systems in a positive way. It can almost be like a superpower yeah. or they can hurt us, you know, if we're doing the wrong things with our dopamine and, and chemicals and our brain. Um, yep. so, you know, do you think it's, possible if you have an addictive personality to use it as a superpower in the right direction and how would you say is like the most effective way to go about that good question so to, to answer that first part of the question i think a lot of times we don't realize we have a, an addictive brain until it's too late right so and and with that i think it's because we are either have a lack of awareness because we don't know how to process certain feelings and emotions. Um, two, when I look at a lot of individuals that I've worked with, um, cause you know, coming out of recovery, I've, I've worked with a lot of addicts that are going through recovery. Um, it's about having the right protocol set up. So when we look at that, what can elevate and sustain proper dopamine levels are a couple of things. And some are obvious, like eating right, sleep, you know, exercise. But I think what a lot of people don't realize is what dopamine actually is and what it does. Imagine it's like, it's like nerve fuel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been in a scenario, and I remember this because I played rugby. And I vividly remember this where it was pouring, it was freezing. And it was like, there's only like a couple minutes left in the match. And my team, I remember we were, there was a penalty that happened. So we're walking over and we're all just like dead. And I remember I pulled the team together and I, we, I like made a joke and you start laughing and laughing can induce dopamine. But then all of a sudden you get this like, 
all right, I, I can push through it. Yeah. So what dopamine is, it's like nerve fuel that kicks in when we feel like we're on the right path. Hmm. So if we can understand that, we can start to manipulate things to have a bigger dump of it and a sustained amount of it with things that maybe we normally don't like to do. Yeah. So a lot of people don't like to act. Let's be real. Exercise is not fun. It, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's when you are training hard, it sucks. What is fun are the results that come from it. Yeah. I would say nine out of 10 days, I am unmotivated. Right. <laughs> I, I just like stare at my shoes in the morning. Like, all right. I love that. I remember, I don't know if you've watched any David, David Goggins, like yeah. I remember him saying that he's like, I would, I would stare at my shoes for 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> and obviously, you know, that's obviously a conversation around discipline, but the point is if we can learn to elevate that hormone along with uh, neurotransmitter with serotonin during these events, or even, you know, working things like that, yeah. then we could start to build a healthy relationship. 100%. So, I, I love cold therapy and I like to use cold therapy first thing in the morning. So get up, you know, hop in a cold shower or an ice tub, whatever it is, go as long as you can. Um, Andrew Huberman says a lot around this and I, what really kind of got me into it was listening to him. Yeah. Um, you know, and building up to, you know, a, like a, I think it's around 11 minutes. Per week where you start to see some of these extreme mental health benefits, uh, metabolism benefits, especially with burning brown fat. Um, you know, so there's long story short, a lot of, a lot of great things. Yeah. But if we can do that first thing in the morning, what we've seen with dopamine is that it can get skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And what we understand about dopamine, it's like depth charges where it hits and then goes down. It hits and goes down. We can hit it and it'll sustain for an element for an extended period of time. Right. So if we have higher levels of dopamine in working out or in when we're working, we're going to, we're going to teach our body to want to do those things, those better habits more often. 100%. So that would be kind of like step one. And that can be simply done. Again, I understand cold doesn't feel fun. You really think I look forward to that every morning? I don't. But what I really try to understand, and this is step number two, is seeing how it impacts your goal. Yeah. A lot of people, like if you were to ask someone, like, you know, what do you want in life or what's your goal? They're like, I, I, I don't know. I've never thought about it. So if we don't even know what we want going into exercise, how do you expect to get there? Mm -hmm. And that I always like to use in the times that I'm not feeling it. Because if we know what we want and we understand how dopamine kicks in, it kicks in when we feel like we're on the right track to getting there. Yeah. So that would be number two is just always being aware of the goal and realizing the things that you are doing that you may not like are all in service of that. And then lastly, I would say is just be consistent and stay balanced. So with an addict's mind, I mean, you know what, I would say, and this can really apply to anyone, but for individuals who love the extremes, you know, those rushes, yep. if we're only going after extremes, eventually our body's going to make adaptations. And what we can understand about dopamine is when we hit those dopamines, and this really applies to drugs and alcohol, it raises that threshold. Mm -hmm. So everything else starts to feel numb. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's what happened to me. And yep. you know, I, I went to a point where exercise, I didn't feel anything anymore. So if we can understand that, I'm, you know, drinking is socially acceptable. And let's be real. Partying is now socially acceptable. There's, right. there's a lot, there's, there's, I mean, look at marijuana, you know, yes, I'm not here to talk, talk bad or, or good about marijuana, but if we look at what's happening, things are starting to be more socially accepted. Mm -hmm. And if we abuse that, we're going to start to desensitize everything else.
Mm -hmm. So again, I just go back to balance, making sure that with those thresholds, even if it is work or working out or stressful scenarios, we are sleeping right, drinking water, eating right, getting our micronutrients, stretching and mobility. So we have that recovery aspect in there so our body can return to normal. For sure. Now come back to that homeostasis. Right. Um, I know that was a crazy long answer, but no, that, that, was, that is, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that was fantastic. I, I say some of the same things. You're just, you're reiterating it in a different way. So I feel like that's perfect because it's like, you know, the listeners get kind of a different perspective from yeah. you. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think you, that was a perfect answer. That was awesome. I appreciate it. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, I think the the thing that you're saying about the baseline, like, and when you're doing things to get hits of dopamine that cause these high highs, yeah, it's going to make the other things, um, when you're like getting tasks done, um, your dopamine that you're getting from those things is not going to feel as good. You're not going to get as much of the benefit from that. So it's, yep. it's like if you can improve the amount of dopamine you're getting from that and, and try to avoid the things that are giving you those, I, I almost like to call them synthetic hits of dopamine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cause th then you just keep going back to that because yeah. these other things that normally would don't do it for you. And I, again, I go back to the, to cold therapy that actually teaches the body to expend more. So, you know, it's like, once you get through that adrenaline rush, when that first hits the cold, yeah. you can start to notice you go through phases in that cold therapy. Yeah. And once you do it consistently, I mean, cold therapy, I'm not, don't quote me on the numbers, but I believe if I, if I remember correctly, it can like increase the amount by up to like 400%. I could be wrong on that. And it can extend it for hours. Yeah. So if you're looking at someone who's addicted to, like you said, those synthetic things, right? One of the first things I would do is is start implementing that cold therapy in, in some form or another. And I say that because that's what I do. It's been awesome. working for me, and yeah. you know, I've I've learned to love it. So and that, that's awesome. And I, I think the very powerful point in that is that it doesn't have that crash right and that's the biggest difference between some of these things that you can do in a healthy way because it's going to have that leveled off for a while and you're going to feel the effects yep. instead of just needing you know that synthetic dopamine hit yep. over and over right so yep. it, I, i'm not even sure on the science of this i'd like to know if, if you know if things like working and like accomplishing something and work and then also like working out does that keep it leveled off longer too good question so it's <laughs> interesting because I don't know if you've ever noticed this, where when you do accomplish something, yeah. we tend to have this, this, let me say, this is better an example with like a, a college level or a pro athlete, yeah. where they've accomplished their career and then they go into depression afterwards. I see where you're going with this. So, yeah, so it, so it can, but what we have to keep in mind is that dopamine goes away when we accomplish something. Yeah. So if we can understand that when we accomplish something, we need to come up with a new goal yeah. or keep expanding on that goal. And that's, I've, I've worked with clients where they've lost a lot of weight. Yeah. And they were feeling good in the process. It was a challenge, it was, but they felt, and then they got there. They're like, I, I don't, I don't feel any different. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's, and it's like, well, that's, that's that scenario. So then it's like, okay, let's create a new goal. Because I think where people also have an issue with this is that a lot of people think, or they, they treat health and fitness like a thing. And it's like, oh, I'm going to train for this race and then, you know, mission accomplished. Right. No, health and fitness needs to be right up until the day you die. Mm -hmm. And there's there's no waiver. There can be different levels of it, of course. Yeah. But if we can start to look at it that way, I think then 
it can do what you're talking about, where health and fitness can improve the elevation um, and we can start to, you know, really look at every workout or everything that we're doing as to just support those dopamine, so everything at a healthy level. 100%. What, what I wanted to also kind of piggyback off is pretty much the point you made, but what, what they're saying in this Molecule of One book is it's really, we get even more dopamine in the anticipation of, yes. of that accomplishment. Yeah. Right. So it's like, it's kind of like, okay, like if you're, it literally something as simple as like, I'm going to go get a donut. Right. It's like you're, you're getting more dopamine from the anticipation of going and getting that yep. donut than you are of like the yep. you get from eating it. So it's, it's yep. super interesting to realize that. And that's something, man, it's, it's great. I feel like I could talk with you for four hours on this subject alone. Yeah, <laughs> We're not even getting to the questions it's, that I have, but <laughs> no, it, it is very interesting. And there's yeah. what's cool is there's obviously a lot more info coming out yeah. about it because, you know, the mind is, there's still so much unexplored about it. So I, you know, I, I, I love, I love this stuff. Yeah. That I, I really relate to you on what you said about your clients that have lost a lot of weight. Um, and they, they immediately like get into a slump once they hit a certain like benchmark or milestone that they've been yep. shooting for. Um, I, I do a transformation challenge every year in January mm -hmm. and I put up a $2,000 cash prize for the winner. Um, yep. and, and each year since I started doing that, the winner, each time has gone into like a super unmotivated period after they've won and gotten the $2,000 and got like, I posted on my social media and everything. Um, and so, you know, it's something I've realized now. And so I'm like anticipating that and making sure I'm already coaching them up. Like I'm yeah. talking to the winners, like the, the final three already about like, Hey, you know, yeah. once you do reach this goal, you know, th there's inevitably going to be kind of a valley after such a peak. Mm -hmm. So just be ready for that. Um, and yep. yeah, so that, that's something I've realized in my own life too. Like if I accomplish something in business or my own workout goals, um, I'm like, okay, well be prepared because you're probably about to go into like a little bit of a slump mm -hmm. after this. Once you reach those goals, it's just super interesting. Most people think once you do reach that, it's like, it's all over. You feel great. It's like your life has changed when really it's yeah. almost th the opposite. And you need to make sure that you continue to progress and build off of that. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah man. So cool, man. Um, but yeah, we can move on from the dopamine topic. I feel like that I did not plan to talk about that so much with you, but I oh, feel like we're both very interested. That's that's awesome. Um, yep. What I wanted to go in with you next, just a complete shift, is what are some of the biggest fitness myths you've seen being advertised in the fitness industry? Because you know, me and you, I feel like we're both no nonsense, no BS, to like mm -hmm. giving people the straight facts. But some people are just advertising. Um, complete BS these days. So what are some of the biggest myths that you'd like to kind of dispel to the listeners um, that you see being advertised these days with fitness? Yep. Um, one of the biggest things I see right now is V-Shred, where what V-Shred does, and I first want to say I'm, I'm never about bashing someone. I'm yeah. not. What I will say about V-Shred is their marketing oh. is top notch yeah. like i want their marketing team but what v shred will do is the lead in with um either i believe the most recent one was like take this quiz to find out your body um your body type you know and it's like we have to train for the body type and which yes there are different body types but if you want to burn fat and build muscle you got to train hard. You got to be in a deficit. You got to eat right, you know. And what it seems like they're doing is they're downplaying that, whether it's selling a supplement, um, oh, yeah. you know, certain things in that aspect. So that would be number one. Um, and where he also talks about like eating like this junk food type of stuff, mm -hmm. where what I see a lot is it seems like we can have these extravagant cheat days or better put, we can out train a bad diet right? or just fit the macros. Yeah. Like th we'll put that all in one bucket. Yeah. That uh, it, it, what that will do is you may, so yes, calories in calories out. 
that exist. And that is the way to release fat from the body, to burn fat from the body. Mm -hmm. But what I see a lot of people forgetting is that of our gut health with micronutrients. So if we're eating highly processed, high sugar, uh, and I'm using, I'm saying refined carbohydrates where it's the carbohydrates that have been processed down. They have a high glycemic index and they have no nutrients. Mm -hmm. Carbs are very good for us. Not saying carbs are bad, but those types of carbohydrates. Yeah. When we fuel the body with that, we end up feeding the bad bacteria in the gut. Yeah. And I think what, now, yes, there's a lot more coming out about gut health, which is fantastic. But I would say the average individual just doesn't see it or, which is really upsetting, doesn't have the money to afford healthy food. That's a whole other conversation, but I'll leave that there. So their gut health gets all thrown off. And then now that we're, we're looking at potential autoimmune diseases or disorders, metabolic uh, you know, dis incidences happening, uh, crazy amount of inflammation. So all of this is going on. So that where just fit the macros or we can have these crazy cheat days. Um, now, yes, if we were to do that once in a blue moon, yeah. totally. All right. But it's where it's like, you know, you, you, you're good for six days, days of the week. And then you eat this 10,000 calorie day and just set yourself back yeah. probably that entire week. So right. that type of mindset. Yeah. Um, and then I, this is now obviously being dispelled, but I'm always going to talk about this. Um, and I love, um, Ben Patrick, knees over toes guys, where he made it a mission to show that you can, not just with the knee, but any joint. So yes. here's what I go with this, where lifting heavy is bad. Oh, thank, or, you. thank you for bringing this up. <laughs> yeah, where there's, there's this misconception that lifting, I, get, I don't know what else to call it, but training in that manner, um, that no one, like, for instance, like people think they shouldn't be training that way. Mm -hmm. When I disagree, I think everyone should have that type of training concepts in their training routine in one way or another. Yeah. I'm not saying a senior citizen needs to do a clean and jerk yeah. or a snatch, but they do need power in their training. For sure. Whether it's learning how to jump properly whatever it is, because I look at it like this. I train for worst case scenario in life. Yep. And if I need to quickly get out of the way, pull myself up out of a building, yep. whatever it is, if I don't have power or strength around these joints and muscles, I'm going to die yep. or I'm going to get severely injured. So with training hard and training for strength, Everyone needs to be doing that. And everyone needs to be training for power in some scenario. Yes. Um, so I don't really know how to classify that, but the best example, like I said, with knees over toes, Ben Patrick showing, like bringing a lot of these old exercises back, like really popularizing the cyclist squat again, the hack squat, uh, knee over toes splits, the Jefferson curl. Yeah. Like so many, I remember, like that was around since the 60s. Mm -hmm. you no, know, bringing movements like that and like showing how to properly keep your shoulder blades strong, yeah. you know, with external rotation, pullovers, all that. So having some version of true strength yeah. and power right. um, and then tied in with that flexibility. Yeah. I see so many people that are super tight. Mm -hmm. So put that all together. You know, that's, those, those are my main ones that I say. No, for sure. I completely agree. And I, I come from kind of a powerlifting background and we met through a powerlifter friend of ours, yeah. Ben, shout out to Ben. Um, and I've even posted like anytime I've posted heavy deadlifting in the past on social media, I've gotten hate from people being like, you're going to break your back, stuff like that. Like there's been a stigma around deadlifting. Yeah. And I think that's a huge myth. Like, you know, train yeah, for power, train, train these big yeah. compound movements 
Like I, I've deadlifted almost 600 pounds in the past. My my back, I think, is stronger from doing. Like I, I think I'd be worse off with yeah. my back health if I wasn't strong in those type of movements. Yep. Right. Um, yep. So so I completely agree with you there. I want to go back to what you said and kind of touch on carbs in general because I feel like you probably yeah. have a very um, particular expertise in this area. Uh, cause I know that you're a type one diabetic and you, you work with special populations on stuff like that. Cause you can obviously relate. Um, so yeah. I, I would like for you to, to verbalize to the audience cause it's something I've talked about in the past. Um, but you probably have a very better, more articulate point of view on it that you can just really clearly, um, tell the audience, but what is the difference to how your body reacts from complex carbs versus simple carbs like why should the listeners be worried about this absolutely so really it's the rate of which it's metabolized mm -hmm. broken down into the final form of glucose so every single carbohydrate on this planet whether it's a complex a simple uh you know, disaccharide, monos, whatever it is, its end result is glucose. And the rate of that happening on when it hits the bloodstream, goes through the liver, is what we want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So that is really referring to the glycemic index or something with a high glycemic index will raise your blood sugar very fast. And for some, it's almost instant, like dextrose, is as soon because what we have to understand is carbohydrates are is not broken down in the stomach. It's broken down in the tongue and the small intestine. Mm -hmm. Protein and fat is broken down in the stomach. That's why protein and fat keeps us full. Mm -hmm. Now, with these foods, when it starts to get metabolized, some of these foods within 30 minutes can raise your blood sugar very high. And then what happens next? Insulin is released into the bloodstream because insulin latches on to the now glucose mm -hmm. because glucose is blind. It latches on to the glucose and delivers it to the cells wherever the liver tells it to go. So what I have seen is that with simple sugars, simple carbohydrates where the glycemic index is higher and it's metabolized very fast, it can potentially cause some issues and I'm, I'm saying this in, in the proper way if that is all that is focused on over time hmm. some immediate notices is that energy where if this happens very quick we get a rush of energy and then mm -hmm. we have that crash mm -hmm. so we don't want to do that all day every day right and what can happen over time with that to extreme scenarios is that we have elevated levels of insulin. Yeah. With elevated levels of insulin, and again, this it can differ from person to person, could potentially cause issues later on down the road, such as shutting down uh, growth hormone, mm -hmm. such as increasing retention um, with, I don't want to say, fat but more of like with inflammation it can impact weight gain but i'm not saying extra insulin causes you to store fat what i'm saying is that it can it can disrupt um the energy process and it can teach the body to retain more especially with water okay. um so with that being said we don't now there could be appropriate times for simple sugars where if our blood sugar is low because we just trained hard and there's an extended period after where right. body's more sensitive, mm -hmm. you know, to insulin. So our, our body's shuttling nutrients. So that could be a scenario where if we do need an immediate burst of energy, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying we got to understand the difference and what could happen if we go to extremes like most of our population in this country. And then complex carbohydrates, which come from fruits and veggies, um, certain grain products, not all grains are high glycemic, yeah. um, but certain grains because of the higher fiber content, mm -hmm. our blood sugar does now this, which 
gives us that sustained energy, uh, has the potential to cause less inflammation, um, and allows um, for, what was I going to say? It, it Again, just going back to the energy standpoint, I, I feel like that's the biggest thing that I want to point out with that is because so many people are dealing with energy issues. Yeah. Um, and also a lot of those food choices tend to be better on the gut. For sure. So again, not that simple as bad, not saying that I'm just saying that's the impact on the system. And if that's all we're eating, especially coming from uh, added sugars, processed carbohydrates, um, and um, highly processed foods right. that can really impact our blood sugar yeah. over time. So I, ho I hope that was clear enough to understand. Oh, that was amazing. That, that was awesome. One hundred percent. And just to kind of reiterate to to listeners, I'm going to sum it down, kind of dumb it down <laughs> for what you said, but it was perfect. Um, but basically, guys, what Brad is saying is, you know, the simple sugars are going to cause you to have that spike and quick decline with your with your energy that you're getting from that um these complex carbs i, I really wanted to hone in on the energy part that you're talking about because yeah i think that's yep. what a lot of people struggle with yep. um and then with the complex carbs you know you're getting that energy and it's more sustained throughout the day um but the yep. simple sugars wanted to reiterate that part that you're talking about the the one time where it is super beneficial to get those simple sugars in um, is when you've depleted your glycogen, which is just how your muscles store sugar um, from like from a workout, um, and then also you get the benefit of being able to absorb nutrients better um, at those times. So perfect what you said, Brad. I, I really appreciate your really scientific yeah. explanation of that. Um, I think that's going to show the listeners how much more beneficial, uh, you know, eating and kind of trying to go towards complex carbs is compared to the simple carbs. Yep. And I think it's funny. Um, that kind of, that conversation kind of paralleled our dopamine conversation. Mm -hmm. Whereas like we talked about quick dopamine hits and, in in quick valleys after getting it from more yeah, synthetic or bad sources, um, compared to the carbs, you know, usually when you're having these simple carbs, you're getting the peaks and valleys like that. Um, so, so, Listeners, I hope you realize that. I think there's kind of a, a pattern there. Um, yeah. With those two. So, very Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Well, Brad, man, I know that we're getting close to an hour already. Um, and, you know, I didn't even get to a lot of the questions <laughs> that I had planned to ask you, but um, I really enjoyed our conversation. We'll have to Same definitely here. have you back in the future if you're, yeah, if you're of course. It. But, yeah, so a couple of questions uh, to wrap things up. Um We'll, we'll make this one really simple. What is one thing that you'd like to challenge the listeners to do after listening to this that they can implement in their life right away? Because on the Ele Elevate Every Day podcast, we're all about taking action right after you learn something. So what would you like to challenge the listeners to put immediate action on after listening to this podcast? Do the things you don't want to do and mm -hmm. tied in with that. You can literally sit down today and I'm, I'm pulling this from Jordan Peterson, but look at the things that you are doing in your life mm. that I'm not going to say that have you feel be stupid. I'm going to say that are getting in the way of what you want. Mm. Um, Jordan Peterson says stupid, so I'm not, not calling anyone stupid. But so look at the things that you are doing today that are not in service of what you want. Take one or two of those and change it. You, and you can literally do that today. I love that. I love that. And I think that sums up a lot of the stuff we talked about <laughs> previously. So that's awesome. Very cool. And then, you know, I know you said your career is kind of catapulting this year, which is awesome. Like what, what's next for you? Like what's, what's on the up and up? Like what, what are you kind of working on? Yeah. Um, doing some bigger projects around health retreats, which has always been a passion of mine. Awesome. So really looking to do a week long health retreat um, and really kind of just be like a place where someone can learn and grow about rejuvenation of the body. Um, I'm also going to be getting involved with some TV. So mm -hmm. just careful on how much I can say, but there's a show that I'm going to be working on 
that I will provide some expertise in, uh, which will be super fun. Nice. Um, and some more, uh, some more uh, music artist festivals types of things. So Very it'll be good. Man, those are some exciting things, man. That's awesome. Yep. I mean, that's, that's really cool. Well, sweet. And then I know I follow you on Instagram. I know you got a pretty big platform there. Like, where are you most active? Where, where can people find you? Yeah, definitely Instagram. Um, and then I'm also creating a community that's free to join. Uh, so if you go to the link in my bio, you'll see one of the things in there. It's like join the free community. So those are the two big things that I'm really trying to grow right now. Nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, man. Very cool. Guys, check out Brad on Instagram. Join his free community. This man, like I said earlier on, no BS. He's, he's giving you straight facts. All right. So um, we have got a lot of the same uh, kind of philosophies around fitness. And this has been amazing. Guys, I know you guys got value out of this. But like I said, you know, don't just listen. You know, put this stuff into practice. Take action immediately. That's what we're all about on the Elevate Everyday podcast. All right. Um, and thank you, Brad, for being on. Thank you to the First, listeners. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, for listening. And guys, um, got expert guests like Brad coming on the podcast every single week. So make sure to like this one if you got some value out of it. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts and information and expert guests. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brad. Of course. Bye. Peace. Elevate. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.